This video will be a quick 5 minutes recap of what Bancor V2.1 is all about and how insurance is covered. So in the crypto space or in the DeFi space, there are three types of insurance that exist right now. The first one is by Nexus Mutual, where you're insuring against bugs in the smart contract. The second one is a kind of buying options. So you're insuring against the value deviation or value volatility in the assets that you purchase. And the third one is what Banco has done, which is an impermanent loss insurance. And I just want to do a quick five minutes sharing of what how Banco V2.1 goes about with insurance. So in liquidity, liquidity pools, you are always adding liquidity into the pool, hence liquidity pool. And in Banco version 2.1, they're trying to resolve impermanent loss by giving it by giving insurance to the loss that you could incur. So there are two situations where that happens. So when we talk about impermanent loss, there are two situations. The first one is where the fund itself, the liquidity pool has enough funds. And the second is where the liquidity pool does not have enough funds. And how does how does the liquidity pool ha have enough funds? In the liquidity pool, we have two types of tokens. For example, the Lisa token and the BNT, which is the Bancor token. And initially, what the main difference between what Bancor version 2.1 is doing against all the other liquidity pools out there, like Uniswap or Balancer or Curve, is that you could always add single-sided liquidity. So you could just add Lisa tokens into the pool, and the pool will mint BNT on its own. And that's really cool because this is like a co a co investment. So the co investment by the protocol itself, BNT. And what do you have with co when you have investment, when you do co investment? One of the benefits that you have is that you get to earn returns as well. So every time there are transactions that goes in and out of the pool, you will have to pay your transaction fees. And these transaction fees now will be given to all liquidity providers, which means me providing the Lisa tokens and Bancor, the co-investment thing that provides BNT. And as it earns this interest, as it earns these fees, it will have it will also collect some of Lisa tokens and some of BNT tokens. So in that way, the under the co-investment part of BNT, they will be able to get some of these Lisa tokens. Well, they have no point using the Lisa tokens, right? So now that becomes insurance. So when there is enough funds for the insurance, the, the additional Lisa tokens that the co-investment earns goes into the insurance fund, just in case you suffer impermanent loss by, by staking some Lisa tokens in there. So that's when there's enough funds. What about the second scenario where there isn't enough funds? Likewise, you have both Lisa tokens and BNT tokens in the liquidity pools. Now, this situation comes in a few ways. The first one is where both sides are added by people, so not added by the protocol. So this co-investment thing does not, doesn't exist. So that's number one. Number two, it's where there, is, there isn't enough funds being, being generated. There isn't enough funds with the co-investment part to get enough Lisa tokens to be awarding the impermanent loss. And so what do they do? Then they will mint BNT. They will mint BNT as part of the insur oh, as part of the insurance coverage. And this will help you and then they will mint it according to the the value of Lisa tokens in BNT based on the liquidity pools. And so that's that's really it. That's how BNT provides insurance for liquidity providers to insure against your impermanent loss. And this is a very interesting model. For more in-depth understanding about how the economics of how this affects the economics of BNT token itself, the price, the, the supply, then check out the, the long video. I'll link it up in the in the stuff. And you can learn more about how how the economics of BNT will change with the version 2.1. Till then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!